morning, church. It is a good day to be in the house of the Lord, amen. We have gathered here to worship. Our call to worship today comes from Matthew chapter 11. Jesus says this, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What a good word. How many of you are thankful for grace this morning? <laughs> right? That that in all of our brokenness, in all of our mess, in all of our mistakes, that God loved us enough to do what we weren't able to do, to send Jesus to be the perfect sacrifice, to pay the penalty that we weren't able to pay so that we could be reconciled with God. What an awesome gift that is. Amen. Let's stand up and sing about that. We're going to sing this song. It's called This Is Amazing Grace. Who breaks the power of sin?
Continue by singing, Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. If you want to follow along in the hymnal, it's hymn number 601. Play. 
pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy folds prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, thou hast bought us thine we are. We are thine now. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, O we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear thy children when they pray. Early let us seek thy face. on Facebook today. Welcome. Uh, leave us a comment. Let us know that you're with us. And we are going to take a few moments to turn and greet those around us in the name of Christ. Good morning. So the song that the choir is doing today is one that goes really well with what uh, Pastor Randy's been speaking about. It's called You Can Build a Bridge or You Can Build a Wall. It all depends on the love that you give. So that's what they're singing about today and they're going to speak clearly so you all understand it. <laughs> Oh, 
Thank you, choir. At this time, I'm going to invite the children to come forward. So any children or anyone feeling young at heart this morning is welcome to come on down. Are you feeling young at heart, Loie? <laughs> I have that problem too, but I'm doing it, I'm doing it for the kids. That's right, the sacrifices we make. Good morning. How are you guys this morning? Doing all right? I'm doing well, thank you. It is a beautiful day. We are talking today about bodies. We all have bodies, right? And our bodies are made up, of, made up of a bunch of different parts, right? We all got different parts. We got eyes, and we got a nose, and we got a mouth, and we got a couple of ears, and we got arms and hands and legs and feet. We got all these different parts. And, and there's this part of the Bible where, where Paul talks about the body, and he said, what good would it be if the whole body were an eye? That's kind of a weird idea, isn't it? And whenever he says that, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a visual person, so I always get images in my head, and I have this picture of this big eyeball rolling around, <laughs> right? And what happens when it rolls so that the, the, the iris is pointed down? It can't see anything else looking at this ground, and it, it can't move very good because it doesn't have hands and feet to move itself around. It's kind of a silly idea, isn't it? And what if, what if the whole body was a hand? Well, then, of course, I think of of Wednesday in the Adams family, I think of Thing walking around, right? And he, he did okay. I mean, he, he managed. He got around. But we know that we have all these different body parts, and they all serve a purpose, right? They all do different things, right? Our eyes, they help us see, and our nose helps us smell, and our ears help us to hear, and we can talk and taste with our mouth, and our hands can touch and grab things, and our feet help us walk, and all these different parts and, and when one of them isn't there, or if it's not working, then that causes problems, right? And Paul uses that to talk about the church, and he says, we're kind of the same way. We have all these people, and each one of us is a little bit different. And we all can serve a different purpose, right? Not very many people can play the organ like Loie can, or can play the piano like Pat can, right? Not everybody can run a soundboard. Not everybody can teach Sunday school or teach a Bible study, and we all have these different parts. Some people are better at making coffee than others. I see Randy in the back there. He made our coffee this morning. We'll find out if he's any good later, right? But we all have different parts and different parts to play, and he says none of us is any more important than anybody else. Right? So just because I get to stand up here most of the time on Sundays, that doesn't make me any better than anyone else here. Right? That's just my job. My job is to do this part, and somebody else's job is to do that part, and somebody else's job is to do this part, and we all have a part to play, and we're all important. So celebrate what makes you different from the person next to you. We don't want to be just like somebody else. Right? We all have our own unique jobs and talents and qualities. You remember that? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you so much for the gifts that you give us, that you made each one of us different. God, it's, it's a mystery that, that you told us that you made us in your image, but we're all different. So we know that you are an amazing and awesome God, and we just thank you that you made us awesome and amazing as well. Help us to remember that you made us unique, you made us different, and you made us for a reason. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys may be dismissed to Children's Church. And I have to consult my bulletin to know what I'm doing next. We are going to spend some time worshiping the Lord in our giving. So as the ushers come forward, it's a good opportunity to remind ourselves that this is a church. We remember that, right? Because we're a church, we give because God asks us to. 
He says, I want you to remember that everything you have is a gift. And we also give because it costs money to run a church. So we're all a part of this body, and we all give to help this body function, and we give so that the message of the gospel will continue to be proclaimed in this community. Father in heaven, we thank you for the gifts that you give us, the resources that you give us. Give us wisdom in how to use these resources, how to use our resources, so that your name will receive all the honor and all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. We are going to spend some time in prayer. We're going to lift up our prayers to the Lord, and we're going to conclude by saying together the Lord's Prayer. If you need the words, they are printed in your bulletin. Uh, A couple of updates. Uh, Martha is home and uh, recovering and doing well. Um, Martha had a birthday yesterday, so 91 years young. And um, I did get a chance to visit Rhonda this week. So um, Rhonda continues to recover. She's got a really, really long, long road. So please continue to keep Rhonda in your prayers. We do have an updated address for Rhonda. So if you need that updated address, um, check in with the office and we can get you that. There was some confusion after she had moved and I think a couple of cards had got returned. So um, while I was there, I made sure to get the right, all the right info so that we can stay in touch with Rhonda as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father in heaven, we gather this morning because you alone are worthy of our worship. God, you are a God that is so big. It's hard to come up with a word. So so immense, so so huge beyond our comprehension. Your, your strength is beyond our comprehension. Your, your power is beyond our comprehension. Your love is beyond our comprehension. Your creative mind. God, all of it is so amazing that we can't fully wrap our minds around it. And God, we gather in this place to worship you because of how incredible you are. That even though you you created the universe, the stars that we see that are that are hundreds and thousands of light years away, millions of light years away, you created all of that. You you put each piece in place and you know all the details about all of it. And here we sit on this, this tiny little planet. 
in the middle of the Milky Way galaxy. And you choose to be involved in our lives. You choose to know us, to see us. And even when you see the depths of our heart, you see the mistakes that we make, and you see the brokenness in us, and you see the way we treat ourselves and the way we treat those around us, you still love us deeply. You still choose to call us your own. God, your word tells us that you know the very number of the hairs on our head. God, you are awesome. And God, we, we gather here because we know that we need you. We know that our life is not complete without you. That there's something missing when we're not in relationship with you. We know that we go astray every day. And we come here to reconnect, to ask for your forgiveness, to, to fall on our, knee, on our knees and beg for your mercy. And God, we know from your word that you give that mercy and forgiveness freely. God, we gather here to say thank you for all of the good gifts that you give us. God, we think of, of this place that we can gather to worship. We think of the people that gather here, the friendships and the relationships that we have in this place. That we love each other, we care for each other, we, we help carry each other's burdens, we celebrate together and we mourn together. We laugh together and we cry together. And God, when somebody has a need, we, we gather together and we do what we can to meet that need. God, we thank you for our families, for our friends, for, for the resources that you've given to us, the homes that we live in. God, the list is endless, the things that we're thankful for. And God, we also come to you because we have needs and concerns. We have, we have family members and friends who are sick and hurting and need your healing touch. And God, we lift them up to you today. God, we know that there are people in our church and in our community who struggle with loneliness and anxiety and, and depression and God, just mental struggles. God, we give that up to you as well, that you would bring peace into their lives. God, give each one of us exactly what we stand in need of and enable us to be your hands and feet, to go into the community to bring peace and light wherever we go. Lord, hear us now as we pray the way you taught your disciples to pray saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm going to sing another song, and, and before we do that, um, I want to, if you'll come on up, I want to read from Psalm chapter 24, and these are some of the words that we're going to be singing. Psalm 24, verses 3 through 6 says this, Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false and do not swear deceitfully, they will receive a blessing from the Lord and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who seek the face of the God of Jacob. 
Stand if you're able. We're going to sing together the song called Give Us Clean Hands. was a good catch, though. <laughs> if you didn't notice, my guitar strap fell off half, about halfway through the song. So, If I looked like I was weird, I was. 
This kid's got a birthday today. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Aiden. Happy birthday to you. It's his birthday. I'll let him get away with it today. We're working our way through the vision, and we're, we've taken this step by step by step because I think it's really, really important that we all have a really clear understanding of what our vision is, right? If we don't know where we're going, how are we going to get there, right? I love this picture. This is actually a picture that I took a couple of years ago when I was out in Wyoming in my happy place, and and. It's a drive to get to Wyoming. It takes me 18 hours to drive, and I can't see Wyoming when I leave, right? It's not like I can just go, oh, there's Wyoming. If I just keep that in view, I'll get there. I have to have a plan. I have to know what roads are going to take me to Wyoming, or I'm going to end up in Kansas. And I don't want to go to Kansas. I want to go to Wyoming. Maybe I'll go to Kansas a different day. But I've got to know where I'm going. So we as a church, we need to know where we're headed. So that's why I'm taking this time to help walk us through, thank you very much, walk us through this process of understanding our vision. So, Cody, if you put that diagram up, we started at the top, the over-the-horizon vision, that's Wyoming. Right? That's, that's the end result for me. And for us, we've determined that our over-the-horizon vision is that we want to grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus. You guys should be able to say this with me by now, right? Deeper in our relationship with Jesus so that we can be the hands and feet of Jesus, go into the community and meet people's needs. That's what we want to be about. We want to be about growing so deep, so close to Jesus that we can't help but go out into the community and meet people's needs. Physical needs, emotional needs, spiritual needs. That's what we're about. And how are we going to get there? So the background vision, we set three-year goals. Those three-year goals were community outreach, discipleship, helping people, and the Sunday morning experience. That was the background. Now, the mid-ground is our one-year goal. So we took the Sunday morning experience from those three-year goals, and that's our one-year focus. We're spending this whole year talking about what happens on a Sunday morning. Are we doing the things that we need to do to grow deeper in our relationship with Jesus, to create an atmosphere in this place where people can experience the living God, a place where people want to come and hear God's word and worship together? And then, on the bottom, in this foreground, this is where we're at now, we're going through these 90-day goals. So, every 90 days, the vision team gathers, and we talk about what we did, and how we did, and what our next 90-day goals are. So, the first four 90-day goals that we set, we talked about prayer, and we talked about, what did we talk about last week? We talked about um, hospitality, right? We talked about the Good Samaritan and hospitality. This week... We're talking about, we decided that it's important for us to create a culture of service. That in order for us to effectively be the church, to be the body of Christ, it's important that we're all being the body of Christ. Church is not a spectator sport. 
It's not something that we just show up to for an hour on Sunday and sit in the pew and hear a good message and feel like, oh, okay, I did, I did my thing for the week. I'm good. Right? It's a participatory thing. Jesus didn't call us and say, I'm calling you to be my disciple, to come for an hour once a week and, and hear, hear some good songs and a good message and, and go home. He says, I'm calling you to be my disciple so that you will go out and make disciples in my name, that you will baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and you'll teach them everything that I've taught you. That's what we're about as disciples. So today we're going to talk about what that looks like. So our scripture for today comes from Romans chapter 12. Now, Romans chapter 12 is one of those sections that starts with a therefore. And any time you have a part of Scripture that starts with a therefore, what does that mean? That means you've got to pay attention to what came before it, right? Because he said, here's all this stuff, therefore, so we've got to know what came before it. So I'm not going to go into detail because Romans is thick. And by thick, I mean like heavy reading, right? It's not like, a, you know, hey, I'm going to quick read through the book of Romans today. Romans is a deep theological book, great to study, but you don't want to zip through it. So for the first 11 chapters of the book of Romans, he lays out all of his theology, who God is, what's the purpose of the law, what is our role, what does grace mean, what do we do with grace? Should we, because, because God pours out his grace so, so lovingly, should we just go and sin more? No. He lays out all of his theology, and then we get to chapter 12. And from chapters 12 through 16 is, okay, now that I've given you all the theology, this is how you, how you live your life. This is what you do with it. So this is the beginning of that. I'm going to read the first eight verses of chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought to think but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function, so we who are many are one body in Christ. And individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Prophecy in proportion to faith ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, and the compassionate in cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So here Paul, he just spent 11 chapters telling us all about the theology and what it means to be a Christian, to be a follower of Jesus. And this is how he begins in telling us how we should live our life. And the first thing he says, he says, therefore, present your bodies as a living sacrifice. Now, that language is hard for us because we don't, we don't really do sacrifice, right? Sacrifice to us means something very different than what sacrifice meant to the Jews when Paul was writing this. They lived in a system where they sacrificed regularly. And by sacrifice, they brought gifts. They brought animals and birds to be brought to the temple, to be killed, to have their blood poured out, and for that meat to be burned on the altar as an offering to God. They had a very clear understanding of what that word meant, sacrifice. And here Paul says, I want you to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That's a powerful image. He's not saying that he wants us to pour our blood out on the altar and, and, and kill ourselves, right? He says a living 
sacrifice. I want you to offer yourselves, give yourselves completely to God. Don't, don't just give him an hour. Don't just give him your left hand. Give him everything. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. He says this is your spiritual act of worship. This is spiritual worship. When you give yourself to God, when you say, God, I'm yours. Whatever you want me to do, I'm yours. So then we all have to become pastors, right? No. God needs us in all these different places, and Paul continues with that, right? We'll get to that in a minute. But he says, don't be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed. And I, I think this, this language is important. Because what the world says, the world accuses us of just being weak. That we can't think for ourselves, so we just, we just act like, like what the church leaders tell us to do, and we just conform ourselves to this really narrow view of, of who we're supposed to be, and we're, we're just sheep. We are sheep, Right? But if you look at what's going on in the world, is not the world becoming this conformed place where everybody has to look the same and act the same and talk the same and be the same? And God calls us to something different. He says, I want you to transform your mind. I want you to open yourself up. Don't just see what the world is doing and do that. I want you to see that there's something greater, there's something better, there's something more powerful that you can be a part of. Study this. There's so much there. I saw an interesting video this week. It was, it was, it was a celebrity, it didn't really matter who, and he was talking about his mother. And he said his mom used to, to, to call him and send, and send him a voicemail every day. And every day she would leave a Bible verse on his voicemail. And she said, he, she has been reading this book her entire life. She's read it cover to cover many times. And yet, every time she reads it, she reads something new. How many of you have had that experience, right? Depending on where you're at in life and what experiences you're going through and what's, what stage of life you're at, there's so much new in here. This word is living. And we can learn so much from it. Transform your mind. Dig into this and see what God has to say. And he continues, he says, I say to everyone among you not to think of yourself more highly than you ought, but to think with sober judgment. What's the opposite of sober? Drunk. Don't get drunk on your own ego. Don't get drunk on your own self-confidence. Don't think so highly of yourself that you get intoxicated with, oh, look at me. We live in a world that is full of narcissism. People that love themselves, right? The, about the greatest thing you can do as a young person right now is to become an influencer, right? To, to have a TikTok account and an Instagram account, and a YouTube account with millions of followers so that everybody is looking at you. That's like the goal right now for people. I want to do everything I can to make people look at me. He says, don't do that. Sober judgment. Think of yourself rightly. Who are you really? And again, that doesn't mean the opposite either. That doesn't mean beat up on yourself and think of all your negative qualities and hammer yourself down. Sober judgment. Who am I? Who has God called me to be? What gifts has God given me? What are some of my negative traits that I can work on? What are some things I can get better at? And what are some things that I can celebrate and do more of? Think of yourself with sober judgment. And all of this is leading to the point where he says, because just like a body has many parts and each part has its function, we 
are all part of one body. And each one of us has a purpose in that body. And if you are so drunk on your own self and your own ego, we're going to have a left hand over here that's drawing all the attention to itself. And we don't need to draw attention to this left hand over here because this left hand is worthless if it's not connected to the arm and connected to the shoulder, right? Every part is important. And he says we all have a part to play. There was a movement back 25, 30 years ago where there was, there was this idea, they were trying to get past the idea that if you were going to follow God, you had to go into ministry. And there, was a, there were a couple of books. One that, that I studied was called Roaring Lambs. Anybody remember this book? Bob Briner wrote it. And he was talking about how we need Christians in every profession. We, yes, we need, we need pastors now more than ever. We need pastors. We need people to step up and be leaders in the church. But we need Christian lawyers, and we need Christian accountants, and we need Christian office administrators, and the list can go on and on and on. We need Christians anywhere, all over the place. There is no one profession that's better than another. Just like I said to the kids, I'm no better than any of you because I stand up here on Sunday mornings. This is what God has called me to do. It's my job to follow the call that he has on my life. And wherever God has placed you, it's your job to follow that call, to do exactly what he has called you to do. What is your job in this body? And unless you're a gluteus maximus, your job is not to sit in a pew. Right? God has called us to be a part of the body. So I had, I had Aiden go grab me this because I was a little bit less than prepared this morning. This, this is a set of guitar strings, which you know, I know a little bit about. So we're just going to pull one of these guys out. This right here is a guitar string. You may have seen one before. It's made out of metal. This particular one has got a, a metal wire down the middle, and they've got a tiny, tiny, tiny little wire that they wrapped around it a few thousand times, right? What, is, what, what can this guitar string do right now? Not a whole lot, right? This one doesn't even have a sharp end on it. Some of them will poke you really good. I've learned that a few times. But this one can't do a whole lot, right? Because it's not serving its purpose. It's not connected to the body. Here's our uh, music lesson slash guitar lesson for the day. Because, you know, I know a thing or two about guitars. I'm just going to strap this on so I can hold on to it. So hopefully it stays this time. So, anatomy lesson. Does anybody know what this is called? Well, this is a guitar, but what is this part of the guitar called? This is the head or the headstock, right? So this is the head, and this down here is the body. So if I take this string, I can be connected to the head. Still not doing a whole lot. Right? In order for this guitar string to function, it needs to be connected to the head and it needs to be connected to the body. Are you following me? Who's the head? Christ is the head. We are the body. This string doesn't function unless it's connected to both. And the part that you don't want to hear is it has to be under tension. If there's no tension, if I take all the tension off of this string, what happens? I don't know if you can hear that very well, but it doesn't really do what it's supposed to do. But when they're under tension, 
it serves a purpose. It plays the right note. And when you have multiple strings under tension at the same time, you can make beautiful music, right? God calls us to be connected to him and to the body, and we live in that tension. How many of you feel that tension that sometimes I just want to get away from the body and I just want to go be connected to God? I want to go in the woods. Give me a Bible and let me go in the woods and just worship God by myself. I don't need church. Have you ever heard that one before? You've probably thought it before. I have. Wouldn't this be easier? Give me my Bible and a guitar and let me go camping and I'll be just fine. Or... I've got a great community of people around me. I don't need God. I've got everything I need right here. So we find our place in that we need both. We need to be connected to the head. We need to be connected to the body. And we live in that tension. It's not easy. It's not easy to read your Bible and to try to have an understanding of who God is and who he's called us to be and be connected to this body in this world. It's a struggle. It's hard work. But when we work together in that tension, amazing things can happen. We can accomplish so much more than any one of us can accomplish alone. When we live in that tension, when we each can understand what our role is, and live into that role, not thinking that we're so important that somebody else's role doesn't matter, but just live wholeheartedly into that role, whatever it is. You know, we have a, we have a small staff here. I'm here. Cody's here. Jody's here. We've got Lowy. We've got Whitney. We've got people on staff. And each one of us has a role to play. I don't need to be typing up bulletins. That's not my gift. I don't need to be doing graphic design. That's not my gift. Right? Cody doesn't need to be doing those things. Each one of us has a role. We have a gifting that God has given us, and we live into that. I don't tell Cody how to do youth ministry. We talk about youth ministry. I did youth ministry for a while, so I have a decent understanding of how it works, but that was 25 years ago. Things have changed a little bit. So we talk and we share, but it's this being in community and living in the place where God has put you and what has God called you to do in this body. Maybe he's called you to make coffee. Maybe he's called you to make cookies. Maybe he's called you to be somebody who is the smiling face that people see when they walk into church on a Sunday morning. Maybe he's called you to teach. Maybe he's called you to be a prayer warrior, to lift up other people in prayer. But whatever he's called you to do, do it with your whole heart. Do it with everything you've got. Because when we do that, That's our spiritual act of worship. That's when when the real amazing and powerful things can happen. Father in heaven, I thank you so much for this body, for this group of believers that gathers in this place and calls this place home. God, that you have called us here according to your purpose. And God, I pray that you would enable us to live into that purpose, that we would have the courage that we need to follow you, that we would seek to learn what our purpose is, and that we would live it out with everything we've got. God, we love you, and we thank you. We ask all this in Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. We are going to close our time together this morning by singing together 
I know whom I have believed. If you want to follow along in your hymnals, it's hymn number 631. Stand if you're able. Um, immediately following the benediction, we're going to sit right back down and have our annual congregational meeting. This week, Wednesday at 10 o'clock, we have our women's prayer group. And uh, Halloween is just a short time away, and we will be handing out candy right out front of church. If you would like to participate in that, we'll be here from 5 to 7. Put on a costume and come help us out. And also, there's a basket out there um, if you'd like to make candy donations as well. As you go from this place today, go knowing that God created you for a purpose. And he wants you to live into that purpose. He's called you to be a part of the body. Amen. Let's be seated. We're going to go right into our meeting today.